Hello, it's how to make a dead cigar bait rig or kings and mahi. All you need is two pieces of wire from 50 to 100 pound. Don't use any heavier than 100 pound or you're going to get fish that are leader shy. Not wahoo, but other fish. Um, two eagle haul laser sharp three or four X's and just some other either a J or a treble just for your front hook, not your stinger hook. And this most likely is not going to get hooked. And a Bill Fisher 275 pound test, 100% stainless steel barrel swivel, and a Fishizzle teaser. And then, yeah, for your wire lengths, you want two about 8 inches to 10 inches, and then uh, one from 2 to 5 feet, depending on what you like. But all I do is I don't I have the wrapping haywire twisters, but all I do is make barrel wraps by twisting it and making it squared off. Be my first. Stinger hook on there, grabbing it with the pliers, and starting my barrel wraps. And then once you get it started, it's normally pretty simple. I'm not amazing at this, but I'm doing this. And then you just gonna keep wrap and wrap. This, and the more you wrap it, obviously, the stronger it's gonna be. And in South Carolina, you can't use more than two stinger hooks. You can only use three hooks on your rig. Some people use two hooks, but three hooks I see works perfect. But do the barrel wraps. Alright. Like that. So you got a nice tight wraps. And then don't cut it. Cause then when you grab the bleeder to grab the fish or whatever, you grab your leader, put it on, what's gonna happen is it's gonna cut you. You're going to want to bend it back and forth. What's going to happen is it's weaken and it just fall right off. There's your tag end. And that is perfectly not going to do anything. That's perfectly... That's uh, not sharp. Alright, um... Then you're going to want to go up. Not but three inches. Roughly. And then do the exact same thing again. Putting your second treble hook, stinger treble hook on. This is going to be your middle hook in the cigar minnow. This is good for different baits for pelagic fish um like uh... for bait i would use a cigar minnow as top but if you can't get a cigar minnow uh... a boston mackerel a spanish sardine or something of that sort maybe even a mullet or a manhaden would work porgy um, even live baiting for with a pinfish or a porgy would be just fine All right. many times as you want and you'll it's a little tricky at first but once you get the hang of it it's pretty simple and then I do the exact same thing I just bend it back and forth and some old guy told me that the faster you do it the it'll break off faster because of the fact that it heats up but I think it just weakens the wire but I do not recommend to cut it there you go breaks off so there's your first section and you want to do the exact same thing to your um, main hook which you're going to go on the head or the mouth of the cigar minnow. And this could actually work for Ballyhoo too. I don't see a reason why because they're very expensive, but you could probably use a dead Ballyhoo too. Um, down here in South Carolina, about 45 to 60 miles offshore, we use this flat lining with no balloon. We just flat line it out when we have a decent current. And I've seen and caught Mahi. Um, I've seen Wahoo, King Mackerel, Amberjack, it's sunken called Grouper, Sailfish, there's Marlin in the area, it'll hit it, Black and Yellowfin, even Bluefin Tuna, um, Bonita, False Albacore, the a whole wide range of fish that'll hit this. But I do the exact same thing. And don't go cheap on any of these, because if you get one on the back hook, then you got to make sure every single one is strong. Alright. And also, if you have the right size cigar man and you make the right size rig, you should not ever have your bait chopped in half. Unless it's something small. Something of size that you want to catch is going to get caught. Alright. And then there he is. Now what I do is do the exact same thing, but I want to make it the same length as the other side. So, I would say roughly right there. Bend it. 
And that's, as you can tell, it's pretty close to what the other side is. Alright. I put my middle hook, not through the loop, through the actual hook eye. Go through there. Not, so, yeah, so, you actually have it through there. Okay? I do the exact same thing again. Your bell wraps, barrel wraps, and you can do a haywire twist. I just don't think it's necessary. Barrel wraps, I've never seen one come down. I have seen them cinched on. I'm not doing enough, but even then you won't lose the fish. You might just mess up your rig, which it's probably going to get ripped apart anyways if you get a decent king or something. Alright. Once you got all that, then you'll be good. And you can use any kind of style teasers of this sort. You don't need the ones with the heads. Those are just overpriced, I believe, for this. If you're trolling with this kind of rig, then it may be necessary depending on the speed. If you're slow trolling for kings, then I wouldn't even think it's necessary. If you start going up to three, six, eight knots, then I would say to use a head. But all these are is um, for shizzles, and they're pretty, I don't know how much they are online, but at a local tackle shop, they're pretty cheap. I think they're a dollar, about a dollar a piece. So there you go, that's your three hooks. Now the next thing you're gonna do is attach your actual leader that goes to your main line. And what you're gonna wanna do is, and I don't know how to explain this, but this is about a two foot piece, three foot piece. If you're going just for kings, you might even wanna use up to five or seven feet because of the fact that you can get a king to try to tail wrap at your line. And if you're using braid, that can really just break you off. Yeah. Um, um, all right. So I did the exact same thing I did on the other ones onto this main wire. And like I said, as long as these are all strong, you should have absolutely no problem with the, any of this breaking. All right. I keep doing rail wraps. And once you get the hang of it, you don't even have to look. I can just look at the TV and I've noticed my wraps will be even better. Which are mine aren't perfect. I'll always sometimes they're really nice and tight. Sometimes they're a little sloppy, but once again, I've never seen them on wrap. I mean, that would be ridiculous. Your line or something will fail before that. Um, you don't need a huge reel if you're live bait, uh, if you're on dead baiting for these kind of fish that I was talking about. Um, the biggest I would use is maybe a 6 0. Um, there's no reason for anything bigger than that. 3 0 would be just fine. If you're going in the internationals, a 12 would be a decent size reel for it. Or even spinning tackle. You don't even need conventional gear. Anywhere from a 50 to 80 pound braid class rod. Next, I um, put on the teaser. And this is a black and purple for shizzle, which is a I never tried this color, but it's pretty cool. And you can tell these are glow in the dark, most of them. I don't know about all of them, most of them. But, and, um, these are really bright and shiny. <laughs> then I go to your swivel. I do the exact same thing on the other end. Like so. Put your swivel on there. And I do the exact same thing. I do my barrel wraps. And once you get that, you got a rig that is ready to go out. And doing smaller wraps, all you're going to do is eliminate your chance. So there's no point of even doing it if you're not going to do good wraps. Because then you're going to go out there, you're going to catch a fish, and you're going to lose it. Rather spend the extra couple minutes and make all my rigs with nice wraps, cut them off properly, and be good to go. Alright, you get it done. Okay, that was a little bit shorter than I like, but I would. I don't even like doing them if they're under an inch, which that's a little bit under, but it'll be just fine. When well, these are getting to the smaller tag ends, you're going to cut up your fingers, which I have already done, but uh, it's not necessary. I always use these big tag ends, and it would have been just fine. Alright, just going to finish off this last one. It doesn't want to break off very easy. Sometimes they break off so simply. Boom. Alright, now you got your whole full rig with three hooks. You're going to rig us through the mouth or head. This is the body. This one you can keep trailing, or you can put it in the tail. I keep it in the tail. So if you have a fish that's this long, What's your chance of missing it? 
but the fish there has a mouth this big. Um, now I'll wrap this up. All right. Um, and then as you can see, there's other colors with the fish shizzles. I have the blue and white, the uh, yellow and green, the yellow the chartreuse, the red and the the whatever it is, green and black. All good colors. Done. <laughs>